GMR. You're listening to the GMR Podcast. Hello, GMR Podcasters. This is Sarah Tracy of Just Sayin' Page. I post really awesome, clever quotes, witty jokes, thoughts provoked on the daily. So Here, check me out, justsayinpage.com. Right, and we're on Twitter. Look me up. Thank you. You can hear my show on Stitcher. Stitcher is radio on demand. Download the free app today. Listen anytime, anywhere. Create custom playlists. Over 20,000 shows to discover. Rate and review my show, the GMR Podcast on Stitcher. Available on iOS, Android, Nook, and iPad. On demand and on the go. No downloading, no syncing, no wasted memory. Stream your favorite podcasts. Don't have Stitcher? Download it free today at stitcher.com or in the App Store. GMR. 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 Hello and welcome to the end of television, literally. Tonight is episode 264 of the end of television. And that's it. Who would ever thought we'd end the same week as Letterman? I didn't plan it this way. I wanted to go at least another five years so I could tie Johnny Carson's record. But as I discovered tonight, as I was walking into the studio, at the end of the month, they're done. So we are the seventh to the last live show to be broadcast out of the uh, building, or narrow cast, as they always used to say, Uh the honor goes to update next week. They get to do the yeah. final live They're show. The last one, huh? And that's very fitting as... That's what the update is. I'm, I'm glad that, you know, protégés of mine are going to get to close this place down in style because they do a goofy-ass show like I used to do many years ago. You know, 27 years ago, I first wandered into this place approximately this weekend, I think, and uh, it was my first appearance on a show called The Hookah Show. The, I remember that show. That was a long time ago. 27 years ago on Mother's Day weekend. It's crazy. So there's a, there's a lot of change in the air. Uh, breaking format because what's the point in riffing a movie tonight? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we always could, but... Uh, what's, what's the know. point? Uh, as far as programming goes, they said they're going to keep accepting programming through the end of June. So stay it doesn't matter. Uh, so stay tuned for more Call Me Crazy. We may be able to crank out at least one more episode of his show. The strange thing about Robert's show, Robert's been doing more programming recently than like almost ever. He just switched to high-def equipment. And so his next episode will be in widescreen. And you'll be able to watch the continuing adventures of Robert's show on YouTube. There's our last overhead page, and it's oddly silent. Isn't wow. that very fitting? Hello. Uh, so Robert's show will continue. Hello. In indefinitely. Now, as far as this show goes, well... This is the end of the end of television. But, of course, you know the GMR podcast or the Too Close for Comfort podcast is still out there, and That's you can listen to that. Live and kicking. It's been getting more listens lately. Still not back to the level of GMR point, golden it's, levels, it's but it's going back up. It's going back I mean, up. This is not for, for this generation. This is for their kids. Now, as far as uh, Pondo Theater goes... Uh, I'll probably at some point put the remaining episodes on YouTube. Eh, we'll see. But uh, keep s staying tuned to this channel until the end of June. Looks like the nine lives are finally used up. You never know what could happen. Uh, they're going to have a big party here on May 30th, the day that we're going to be in Phoenix Comic Con. But, of are course, we? we can go any day we want because my panel is completely canceled for that event. So uh, we could go on the Friday, we could go on the Sunday, and we could come down here for the final time if we want to. Uh, there's not going to be any live programming that night, which I, sh I say, bump those regular shows, pour everybody into Studio B, and let's do uh, like 
when we did that 15 year anniversary thing. Well, you know, I've been doing programming down here for 25 freaking years. We just passed that last month, April 13th, 1990, first Forbidden Zone. That ran for two and a half years. Then uh, in 94, we uh, we started, like it wasn't Maglione that did it. We started doing TV in the alleyway in the middle of the night. It's the three. Instant access. And this guy, Mark Brady, if he hadn't been walking down Broadway and seeing that the Pussy Gallery was for rent. Wow. You can you, you stop that right now. Now I can hear myself. I don't like that. I oh, thought we need to. It's last time they can hear you at home. Kevin, no. can you turn the music up Kevin, so we can't hear get in ourselves. here? Because because I uh, I'm tr- we're trying to listen to Alice Alice Donut. And we did that show for oh about a year and a half. It feels like so much longer because three hour shows. No. Those, those and three then hour until shows the truck was stolen. You know the funny if, thing is Robert's show has become half a sports uh, show. And he used to make fun of the sports beat guys, and now he is the sports nah, beat guys sport, yeah. with his uh, hockey and NASCAR talk, which I think is yeah, fun. We ought to use this one for the podcast today. Yeah, you might, or maybe, you might may, want to. Yeah, because I was, I was already because thinking that. This let, is let, me, let me just suggest, uh, since we're talking about it, that one day we were getting me and Mark Brady, the guy sitting over there in front of the camera next to you, Marty. We were getting evicted from the Barrio. Was a Barrio Hollywood down there at Kennedy yeah. and Main Street around that area. We were getting kicked out of there. Yes. And Mark is walking down Broadway for what you know. He's probably over here at uh, what we used to call Cafe Quebec, which is now what Shot in the Dark. Yeah. Yeah. Cafe. The only 24-hour cafe in downtown Tucson left. And they were not 24 hours no. back when. No, no. That would have been great, wouldn't it? Oh, we yeah. would have been doing they the show from inside. Back back just, exactly. You would have been thriving. You'd probably shown up more often because well, you'd yeah. been like, oh, I can. We go down there and we can drink coffee. Nobody all night. would have left. Everybody could have hanged. Yeah, because um, oh, you get a little, you get a little bit uh, worn out just going to the cafe and uh, take a breather, you know. But so Mark Brady saw that the place was being for rent, and then we, I was talking to Dan Maglione at the time, and so Dan Maglione, I didn't have the money. Dan Maglione fronted me the money so I could, we could rent that place to live in it, which we probably shouldn't have been. Although there was yeah. his. Pusey's nephew was living upstairs in the on the in the loft, so it wasn't like it wasn't people weren't already living there. You'll it was like an it was like an YouTube artist. Location. It was a place where artists were supposed to live and and do their art. There was the, there was the one guy that, was that a perfect home for you. There was the guy who lived under the loft with his girlfriend, who reminded me of. There was somebody who lived underground. Who, who, who's that? Who, who's who's oh, that wow. guy that? Uh, was in Pulp Fiction that kept the watch up his butt. I don't know. Christopher Walken? Christopher Wa- there was a guy who looked like Christopher Walken, my roommate, <laughs> I guess. He used to trip freak me out a little bit. I remember one time English Dave was over there, and I was like, you know, that reminds me of, and he's like, and I said, uh, Christopher Walken? And he's like, oh, that, that crazy fucker? And I'm like, oh, come on, Dave, keep it down. Anyway, so we moved in there, and then Dan Maglione thought, hey, there's already wires running over to Cafe Quebec. Why don't we just... From an experiment, J.J. Yeah, uh, J.J. Styles. Your first director. Was he your first director? No, he was one of the first. He was a, he was your, he was a longtime camera operator. Probably your best director. He, I think he right? apprenticed his audio and then... Uh, the best setup you I can't guys. I call him the best director. We used no? to yell at him quite a bit. That's probably why he left the show. Well, but he also he came. Do a pretty good he job. also came with his mom, yeah, who who was team. working the audio. So you had like a crew, a built-in crew. Yeah. If you hadn't abused him so much, because you were cocky young young you high know, schoolers. Uh, we were kicked out a, a few weeks after they left, anyway. So I was just telling Eric the story of my seven-year sabbatical from this place. Oh, that's a which good is story. when instant access happened. That's a no, that's you know that's the kind true. of thing we should talk about on the podcast. The kind of things that are evergreen, and you know what I'm saying. Well, it's like, so fitting to tell these origin stories one one more time. Now, well, do you want to tell the story you told you told Eric? Oh, about uh, he he didn't even know, but from '92 to '99, I was kicked out of here for seven years for 
breaking a microphone. But really, back in the day, what used to happen was uh, there'd be a bunch of shows in a row. First show at 6 o'clock, they'd check out the equipment. The equipment would go from program to program, and whoever turned it in at the end of the night, they got the blame for anything broken. I was told, oh, just, you know, write the thing, say turn it in. A year later, we melted some gels in a rather classic I episode. That. And yes. then they decide, they looked on the record and said, hey, you broke a microphone a year ago. And then wow. I was like, screw that, I'm not paying you. Just cut to 19.99. I paid them the 350 bucks, And I think since then, I've gotten my 350 bucks worth out of this place, definitely. But... And that's all old management. That's ancient history, like 23 I, years I ago. Myself was, I myself was was suspended. Kept those I myself was you ought to because you yeah you owned them. Classic momentum. Yeah, but you were just trying to get away from that situation. <laughs> I myself was uh, lost my membership status because uh, I had gotten a, a grant for a project and I never never actually was able to complete the project it was a complete cluster trying not Screw trying up. to cuss the last the last episode I, sh I should just be like <laughs> doing it Robert X X X X titty something I don't know <laughs> but, but yeah you, you had a grant and you didn't I had a grant and I failed again. to complete that project not for lack of trying well there was a there lot was of hard, hard, hard work though, put into that. Right. You know, I, I really, I really was. I, you know, we had, we thought we were doing Mo a Monty Python movie. Yeah. But we had Tucson. We had our friends in the parts. You know, and very few of our friends were actual actors, actors or <laughs> or dedicated to the project. It like worked some, so well in like small skits. I just want to hang out and get high. You but, know, you know well, TV method. You know, five minute skit. But when you try to do a feature length. When, when we uh, when we recruited Fred's sister to play one of the villagers in the, in the Noah's Ark scene, and and Noah and Noah's Ark was was going to be a trailer, it's kind of like that. Too close for comfort episode we reviewed not too long ago. We were trying to shoot a oh, yeah. Noah's Ark scene with a trailer, and they were shooting a Noah's Ark scene in an apartment. I don't know. Okay, I can anyway. I can I can see the connection. And it all falls apart at the end. It fell apart and was unable to, I was unable to satisfy that grant commitment I had made. So I lost my membership, membership status for, for several years until I was able to turn in, turn in a poor, pale well, I've got a, something, I've got a something to satisfy. <laughs> I've the powers that be. I didn't lose my membership or anything, but do you remember when I broke the camera when when Susan and I were, when Susan lived across the street with her husband Michael? No, I don't know this. Yeah. You don't remember that that dude with the long yeah, long, the long beard lived beard. right across, right next to the Pussy Gallery. He was like six foot. Oh, I think mm. you're seeming to you're striking a bell of some sort. Yeah. Here. Anyway, she had checked out a camera and she was the producer and I was working the camera, feel feel the camera. And we were right around the corner over here, and for some reason, it's sitting on a tripod. The w there was a freak wind, like a rogue wave, came up and just boom, knocked it over, and it landed right on the lens. And it just like I don't know how many billions and billions of dollars was of damage was done. I'm so dry. Wouldn't be a show if he hadn't so, looked in here one last time. So we sort we sort of settled <laughs> out of court. I didn't I didn't get kicked out for that, even though I wasn't the one responsible. It was uh, Susan. Uh, we ended up painting. The, remember, we painted the hallway when she put all those designs and all that crazy crap on the thing, and that was her art because she was she's a famous artist. I mean, her work has appeared in movies and, and stuff, mm -hmm. and she's in galleries. And um, anyway, <laughs> so we we painted that, and that's that. I, I should have lost it, you know, or the time when I was goofing around, baked out of my brains in camera in in in, in Studio B. And we're goofing around with the front of the camera, and the, and the lens popped off. The, no only fun. It did, the only thing that held it on was the, 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 the what you call it, the, the focus adjust. You know, I was setting that thing up tonight, and a little plastic piece popped out of it, and I popped it back in. I'm like, that felt perfectly fitting. It's all well, falling apart. Man. And, and then that. six months from now, they'll be like, oh, you got to buy this new camera because you jammed that thing up, dude. Like a, 
They'd be like, go prove it. We you're just responsible. Said the story. You're responsible right now. He just talked. He just admitted. He just admitted it. for everything in here right now? This is a TV show. Hey. Yeah, I signed for it. What? 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 But after that hour. Yeah. What about that one time when I was uh, on tour with the Zero Tolerance Task Force in California, <laughs> and I left the video camera running in, in uh, what was the name of that band? The Dairy Queens. I left it in their jam house. We had goats running around this place. It's crazy. <laughs> I left it running. and but one. Of, for some good I footage. think I saw this episode about 12 times. And one of the guys from the band... Walked up to the camera. He was he was over there playing Nintendo, and then he just suddenly stopped. I just left this camera running. Yeah, it's like all two hours afternoon, of raw just footage. shooting, just shooting footage, <laughs> and that was the most inter. Anyway, the most interesting thing that happened on that footage, which I ended up using. I have one frame of that footage. This guy walks up and and uh, unzips his pants and pulls his his uh, limp willy out. And starts flapping it, it around, very brief. It and just a, flaps yeah. it around a few times in front of the camera, and then he, then he goes back and plays, starts playing the game again, and that. But so I turned this in <laughs> as as one of my one of my one of my programs. Yeah. Is this part of your grant? No, this no. Is, uh, oh, okay. After he got back in, started more quality programming. This so. A police officer sees this, <laughs> and he thinks it's some sort of child pornography. Oh no! And he gets very upset, and he starts making waves. So this ended up being in the front page of one of the newspapers, and in the the front page of another section, the wow. entertainment section. Entertainment that, people thought that was entertainment. I guess that well, was entertainment, it performance been. art. So, yeah, there you go. I had I had policemen, undercover policemen, detectives coming over to my my house when I lived over at Grant and Craycroft or Pima and Craycroft. I had undercover cops coming looking for this the copy of this tape, and I said, I don't have the tape. JJ has the tape. JJ has well, it had run like five times, oh, four or five times at this point. Just that one excerpt. Yeah, it had ran way more than it ought to have ran. Like, you're not supposed to run well, the like, same show. Like once was too that many, many times, but it it had, it, had, it had got it had ran it had run way a whole many many times. Nobody in here. But police, <laughs> well, police came to my house. The detectives came to my house. I said. JJ has the tape. They went to JJ's house, and JJ, I don't know. He said, we were, I was trying to get JJ to come down here. I think if he had known, this might have been the last show ever. He would have been here, but JJ, I told him JJ had the tape. I don't know if I had the tape or if I was lying to him. I don't remember this at this point. But regardless, they had many opportunities Maybe it wasn't legal for them to seize the tape. And then I had to talk to Sam Barron. I had to, oh, I was, I was like, I was almost at like sixth level at that point. You uh -huh. know what I mean? I was, al I was almost, uh. All right, Gene. We got a big Gene. That's Ray Daniel. Ray calling for the last Ray, show. Oh, here uh, we how, are. What is this crap? What is this crap that I'm hearing that they're going to close the studio? Yeah. Well, May yeah. 31st, yeah. Close to the public, May 31st, Saturday. Yeah, right well, out of money. So so that means that mean our shows are over? Pretty much, yeah. This one is. This is the very last episode of this show. We can do, like, one more Call Me Crazy. That's about it. Yeah, that's about it. What the hell is going on? No funding. <laughs> Nobody wants I, to pay. No, there's no funding for it. That's such a, and I, I, I am livid. I, I'm, I'm pissed. Are, are you, are you upset enough for us to come pick you up after the show? We, we. Uh, I just got home. We'll talk a little bit about that, but. Okay. I, just, I really didn't want to quit my show. I wanted to quit my show on my own. <laughs> That's true. Oh, I see. Yeah. So. In other words, you wanted, you got dumped before you could dump them. You didn't get canceled. Exactly. You quit. 
You're Dave Chappelle. You wanted to be Dave Chappelle. Wow. Yeah, I, I went to Africa. You know? your, I yeah. your ego is what got, what got bruised. Go back to Mexico City, bro. Oh. Where it's all happening. It's the biggest city in the world. Can you imagine the things that are happening there right now? You think New York is exciting? Well, it could, is it really true that this is the last, last, last live show? Yeah. Yep, that's very I true. I found out just I mean, as I walked in. I mean, no fanfare, no big party. I mean, like. No, the big party will be down here on uh, May 30th. Oh, God. There won't be a live show to go along with it. I guess we're going to have to get the coffin ready and the black drapes. That's right, yeah. Oh, yeah. Funeral. Yeah, funeral. This, you know, we'll be the pallbearer. You know what? We got, we got a new contestant for the Day of the Dead uh, Festival. We'll have a public uh, access death uh, coffin thing. Yeah, really. For Day of the yeah. Dead. You know, talk, Les Muertos, that festival? And normally, you guys, you know, I normally don't call in, but when I just saw that and Marty text me, I was just kidding to believe it. I was like, yeah, yeah, I figured you might want to at least call. You ought to, yeah. You ought to, you ought to text JJ. Man, it gets such a shame. I mean, they have funding for everything else, for anti-everything, but for public access, you just can't do it at all. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. I've gotten to meet in some incredible New friends, you know, that I've had for, seems like a, forever, but, <laughs> you know, for a long time. And uh, I picked up a pretty pretty cool skill, you know? Yeah. The sense of community will be over pretty soon. Well, you know, that's... I guess. Nobody, nobody like you know, people are resistant to change, and uh, that that's just tough shit. So, okay, so what, what about Channel 12? What's going on with that? Don't know. Uh, I, I imagine Channel Twelve will. I think they're done too. Be, oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah, I think the whole. I think that both of them are done. No money uh, for anything. They're still going to have one more uh, city hall meeting in June. Yeah, June seventh, uh, I think, or June. Uh, yeah, you could call down to the front desk. One more chance to get well, Larry you know Beiser in Hollywood, Jack, and go down there. Well, Marty, I could realize that maybe this gets all big. Big practical joke because you know how many times I done my memorial last show. I know show you've done at least five or six final shows. Show. Yeah. yeah, well, unfortunately, this is not a joke this time. <laughs> this is not a test. <laughs> we are yanking the band aid off tonight. Oh, man. That's truly an end of an arrow, dude. Yeah, right? the end of television. Oh, you know what? I only wish <laughs> yeah. I was the last show being broadcast oh, live. Oh, no, that would, oh, that would be, that that would be, be the, classic. That's, that's be next off. week. There's six more shows next Saturday going out live, ending with Update, which is practically like Stupid Show version 4.0. So at least we're ending on one of these goofy shows. Yeah, yeah it's I, terrible. I, I, guess I refuse to believe is that a live it, show? Guys. Well, we might have to just... Uh, Get call me crazy going for a uh, YouTube exclusives now. It's just so horrible. Yeah, I mm. mean the memory there, guy. God, I yeah, mean, yeah, quarter of a century. The great thing all the way to Shane Eden, and it's still yeah. not enough. Joe Seidel living in the basement. Yeah. Is Israel's props in the basement. I, I, <laughs> oh man, that was, that was creepy. That weird little room where the elevator is, that back room. Oh, they call that the abortion clinic. Getting up on the roof when you're not supposed to. Uh Oh, that was fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's like another side to that place, like purgatory. Jimmy finding questionable garbage in the trash cans. (laughs) This place is like a big haunted house. One of my favorite memories that nobody knows about on the air is in 99, I think it was, when we first came back on, uh, we were in control room B doing Forbidden Zone, and you and Robert would occasionally sneak in beer and keep it underneath the oh, control Robert. room. And then one or night, them. one of you guys knocked one over, and I managed to clean up the whole mess 
Put it in a garbage can. Walk outside during the show. Throw it in the dumpster around the corner. Come back up. Finish the show. Nobody ever knew. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. It didn't even stink like beer or anything. But then you guys never did that again. So. Oh well, yeah, because they knew. Hey, damn, that didn't I go think well. That was close, Marty. I just thought you had some skill. You got some skill. I remember when uh, flipping channels tried to throw a pie at somebody, and there was a pie that you could see the stain on the floor in the uh, control room. Well, dude, they did that, that was during Juggalo show, show time period. I they moved, threw pie in the control room the camera, in the huh? studio. Oh, okay. they were trying to pie somebody on a show. <laughs> and Mark Herman's moving away to uh, Atlanta. Mm -hmm. He got a job at a, a TV station. It's all sorts of change, man. Not to mention personal stuff as well. So, no, no, you know, no you know, it's all the writing on the wall was Travis. Was the writing the on show? the wall. Oh Fireside yeah, he took off. But we saw the writing like, on the like wall. But we walked around the corner that one morning and discovered oh, yeah, all that. Yeah. <laughs> That's a different story altogether. But yeah, Fireside yeah. Chat, he quit like a year ago. He didn't want to stay till the bitter the bitter end. Harrigan uh, Harrigan was like, Oh, I'm gonna quit. Yeah, I'm Harrigan retiring. bailed out. He was that do last month. Tonight. That was last month. Yeah. He bailed out for tonight. Yeah. We're the only live show me. tonight. Is that right? Yeah. Well that makes it easy. Oh man! So nobody's gonna come in here and chase us out. And That's like, true. Yeah. Yeah, but no, no more no, no, no pie and coffee. Think about that. No more pie. Pie and coffee is done. Gone. You the have to go to Locos now. Hey, that's a, that's Mama's fudge is gone. Well, that's yeah. It's a shame. Hey, listen. It's all gone. Shame. So let's all tell our stories how we first heard about public access. Mm. All right. How did you first discover public access? How did I do it? Well, Where? I used to work out at the airport for Arizona Stagecoach, and one of my drivers um, knew 666 Israel. Ah. Knew him, okay? And uh, anyway, uh, Bill, Bill Lutz is his name. Oh, I remember that guy. Yeah, anyway, he... Uh, he also did like like Dan does. He does like script work and other sort of you know odd stuff. But anyway, he uh, he also had this incredible vinyl collection. This guy collects the most obscure stuff. Plus, he had every Beatles ever in every format and every language possible. And uh, oh, Roger anyway, we're would watching. Love that we're, guy. we're over at his house. We're over at his house, and I'm listening to, to Telly Savala singing Christmas songs or some crazy shit. It's a good album. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> And uh, uh, he's got the TV turned on, and there's six down there, like pointing at pointing at the camera and oh, I wish I would have recorded and, that stuff and all that. And I and I says, "Wow!" I says, "Well, that's some crazy stuff." He goes, "Yeah, that's live TV." And I go, "Really?" He goes, "Yeah, right downtown, public access." He goes, "That right there, right now, is live." And I go, "Really?" He goes, "Yeah." He goes, "Would you want to go meet him?" He goes, "I know this guy." He says, "You're gonna love him." I go, "Fuck <laughs> yeah, let's go." <laughs> so I come down here. And uh, I, w I walk in, you know, and, and, and then I go up to, uh, I think he was in B at that time. I think, yeah, six was in B. Anyway, I walk in there, and, and they got seats set up, you know, like a little auditorium. And uh, there's a couple of, couple of young, or some kids running the cameras, and this blonde lady in the control room doing the switching. And here's six over there, biting and growling and all that. And I'm looking around, and I'm thinking, Wow. This is all free TV, and I can, you know, and it's free to use. It's everything's free. So that was like what ninety one. That was in ninety. That was in ninety some. Oh, okay. Yeah, and uh, so I thought this was really cool. So then I got to meet Six, and he is. He, he was a very, very yeah. You nice go. Oh, guy. that was just TV. He's just yeah, a just normal TV. person. And also, <laughs> it's true. You know, I I, I I I almost said to him, you know, you look taller on TV. <laughs> <laughs> but that's called the Frankenstein effect. But that—that's another story. Anyway, that's that that's was. Uh, and then after that, uh, I asked uh, Six invited me back down. He goes, I says, Wow, this is cool, man. I said, I'd love to run these cameras. He goes, Well, why don't you come down next show I do? And he says, And, and, and run a camera. And I thought, Okay. So I did. And I did that for three shows, and before I was even a member. It was a wild, wild oh. west back then. Yeah. 
And it was I remember a that. camera without certification. Yeah, yeah. Probably doing a better job. And and it was it was amazing. <laughs> his whole family was involved in the show. His wife was the director, and his, and his children were the camera operators. And except for that, when, when he let me do it, you know, briefly. And I thought, wow, this is so cool. And I got hooked right in there, wow. right on the spot, on the spot. Wow. wow. And wow. Uh, they they were the nicest people too you could ever they meet. Were. Although they they all had. Six 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 tattooed on Linda, their Linda on did their not. Butt. She didn't. No, oh, they no. were very sweet. The yeah, children Linda, did. Yeah, the children had it across their 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 forearm no. wrists. I forget which wrist, left or right. I forget which one. They had sixes across the back of the wrist. Whatever, which one, whatever was appropriate. And and That's uh, hardcore. And six had his across his forehead. No. Yep. I Deny remember. thy maker. How how did you remember? find this place, Ray? What was your yeah, first experience? Ray's yeah. story. Uh, so the, the, the first time I went there was because of Marty. If it wasn't for Marty, I wouldn't be doing anything at all. If I remember right, your first time down here was my third show, the Interfere show? Oh, yeah. That would go even further back. Yeah, if it wasn't, you know, like... I think he was there. Thing what was the well. date on that? Oh, that's like... May of 1990. No, we're that. asking how we heard about it. Oh, how did you first hear about the station? No. Probably, probably because of me and Duncan. You and yeah, Duncan. It was, yeah. Well, primarily you. You're huge fans of, uh, what was the name of the show? Uh, the Hookah Show. Hookah see, Show. One of my friends. Was Scotty, what, what's Scotty's last name? Uh, Scotty Silverman. Silverman. I'm one of my Goldman. friends, uh, Shane Peterson, you remember him, of course. Uh, no. he, he's yeah. You even remember him. He's the guy who's all Uncle Stony. Oh, one night only. The guy from the radio. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, he I, said. I totally love that guy. I love that guy. He said, uh, "Hey, I'm going to be on TV tonight." I'm like, "What?" And so I turn on the access station, and there he is. I'm like, "Oh my god, this is crazy! You can actually be." He on He was down on, on Scotty Silverman's yeah. show yeah. before you. Yeah. He he he's the guy that's responsible. I for mean, all of this? I already knew about the station, but that was the guy who, who showed me that, yes, you can actually go and do this. And so then I was hooked watching every Saturday night. I was probably watching the first night Harrigan came on. Uh, the first night? Probably, because I was Har watching before he was on. This is before they were in this building. See, but, I didn't know about them. I oh, didn't. Uh, when I first got into it around 88... Late eighty seven, they were in here. But yeah, I remember were. years before watching Twit broadcast when they were like down the street or yeah, something. Yeah, and that's when they had that's when they had A and B channels, remember? Oh yeah, B cable. B, B cable, <laughs> B cable, yeah, my mistake. Well how did you discover yeah. this place, yeah. Gene? Uh, Too long ago. I was it was back in the A B cable days. First thing I was watching was it was I forget the name of the show. I think Mark used to work on it in a later version. They were, it was it was uh, some Torino. What was his first name? Oh damn it! See, this would be a better story if I can remember his first name. Eddie Torino. Oh yeah, yeah. You're was over expert. here in Studio B in the control room. I'm pretty sure it was Studio B with the camera, and he's and he's playing records, and they're doing. Uh, and then somebody's oh, doing audio weird, weird effect. No, it wasn't. Oh, can we look it up? No, we can't. We don't have time. <laughs> There's no database <laughs> of these things. And, and none of us remember. What's the point? Because we're all, well, let's not even say it, too old. We've been here 20, 25 years, all of us, one way or another. So I was watching this show, and they're playing records, and... Somebody's doing this weird, like, like the out. They're taking video of the album and they're doing these weird effects on it, like uh, poster, uh, some sort of effects. You're thinking of Enigma looks, Rock Talks. Oh. That, that might be it. Yeah, I, I got to finally get to work on that show, and that's when I had the most fun I've ever had. Get to free. <laughs> yeah, free you form. and Rob Schultz. Rob Schultz was directing. Yeah. Let me finish did, my story. Okay. Uh, so I'm watching that, and there's a phone number up there. And, and I call it up, all right? Because I, I don't believe this is a real thing. This is, this to me, it's a television. I'm watching Mary Tyler Moore or something at this point. I don't know what this is. 
I called it up, and I, and the, and uh, and Eddie answers, and I see him answering on the phone, right, hitting the button or whatever, and I and I say fuck, <laughs> and then I hang up immediately, cause and I I heard myself say fuck on the television. I was like, I just that blew my mind. Yeah, blew my blew hair back as they say now, right? No internet back then, kids. And that, and that that was my first taste. And then later on, I met Fred Janis, and he was volunteering down here, doing uh, oh, cable volu- casting. He's a volunteer cable caster. Oh. And he would call me up. Yeah. I'd be sitting at home, and he would call me up and say, "Hey, check this, check this out. I'm gonna play this weird video." He he would search the shelves. They had they had like a a shelf just full of videotapes, and he was in you know he was master control. So he was able to pick and choose the things they played between the live programming because he was vol- wow. it was a, it was on Saturdays when cool. Bill Bowler was <laughs> when they had the fifteen minute interlude before we started doing the fifteen minute shows. How um, could you do a final program and not mention Bill Bowler? So I was I was uh, actually <laughs> down here. Prophet Alpha. See, I'm trying to just throw in all the. Oh yeah, <laughs> I was down here. Working in master control for about six months that whole summer. All I didn't become a member until December of 1989, and I know I was there the whole summer, just like under you know under the radar. And I remember sometimes things would go horribly wrong in master control, and I and uh, one of the people that worked here, I think it was Leslie. Uh, nobody was able to figure it out, but I just sat there tap you know messing with the computer. With, That's uh, what I with the done. programming Push thing, and happens. eventually I figured it out, and I felt like I, I had actually accomplished and contributed to the public access studios. But I started out here as an underground volunteer. Yeah, Cliff was doing that volunteer cable casting for a while. Oh, I never saw him, but maybe, you guys, you guys were here before me. Very slightly, I was. And anyways. I know Mark. Mark's story must be off by at least a year because. I met Mark down here when I first came down here. I remember the first time I so saw. I was here before you then. Yeah, you know, you know I, believe I remember you meeting were. you when uh, you probably were wandering in and doing camera. Like I need a volunteer camera person. Next thing I know. Oh, when I was begging TV shows to let me work, work their shows. The streets. And I met you know, Marty. And Mark's Mar- like, how old are you? And I'm like 16. He's like, what? You're 16. Yeah, Marty. Marty <laughs> and Cliff were like just these kids, these punk ass kids. Yeah. And. Uh, <laughs> They're they're doing stuff and they and then somehow Fred Fred uh, volunteered us to help them film a project of theirs. Oh yeah, our first. And that's at a how movie. I met yeah. Marty. When I met Mark, like he was just hanging out, working every single show there was yeah. down here. Like once he got a little taste of it, I'm working every live show there is today, like all eight of them. I'm like, hey Mark, you want to come out and hang out and have a cigarette? Get 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 some coffee or something like no i, I got I, you know back what? on two minutes i gotta work i gotta work about six more shows and i'm like oh, i i i didn't respect him back then i was like no that's <laughs> ridiculous mark yeah but i got i got some mad skills doing that i'm a great had, cameraman if nothing else you had a lot of fun oh i had a blast do we have, we have another a, caller we do yes yes hello oh hey hi, hello there how you doing hey. Fantastic. How are you, gentlemen? Yeah, we've uh, been better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This exactly. being our final 20 minutes. Yeah, I, this is the... Until we start going live on Google Play. Yeah. We could do that instead. Six times That's, a year, keep the same schedule. So, so uh, we got I just want to say, I want to say you guys are awesome for what you've been doing. And, like, throughout the years, I feel... A lot of people are affected by what you did, by the idea of what you guys you. have thought. You know, the idea of being there for the community. You are all great. You're all awesome. This is every wow. ending is a, every ending is a new beginning. That's right. It's bittersweet. Yeah, it, it is. I wish I knew you in real life because I could use this real. <laughs> reaffirmation every day because a lot of times I wake up. Coach here. A lot of times I wake up and feel like. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert, everybody! I'm gonna. I it it's it's Paul Hilsey from Update. 
Hey. <laughs> you get Yay. the honor of being the Good last live show next week. I, I get I yeah. get one next week, and everyone's yeah. invited and you're, on that one, too. You're, you're the last one. Hey. You can. You guys can come on my live. Is, I, do I get one? I don't even know. I just yeah, saw I asked yeah. before, Facebook and they said, oh, update is the <laughs> final live show. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so where, where do you where do you do your show out of what A or B? I I get B. Um, but you do it out of the studio, right? Do I know this Sorry? fella? You you do it in the studio, right? So you get it. You can get yeah, a shitload of live. people in there. I do it live, and it's uh, next next month, this month, this episode. We're celebrating the eighth year wow. of the show. Wow! Wouldn't it be something if every every public access member was to come down and cram into Studio B for the very last <laughs> live show for your we show? Should. Wouldn't we that should. be something? I'm down. If, I, if I'm the last one, let's do it. It's not over yet. Next week. No, no, no. I think you, not, not till the last drop. Stay and tuned. I'm, I'll be there. What time's your show go up? Be, we, go, we go live at 9.30. 9.30 wow, perfect. p.m. It's like the last one. It's right before. Because we get, we... We we were tired of like having to rush out before someone like there is a, there <laughs> yeah was a, I know that feeling there was a we had we had like this like old this old um, church couple that would like be after us and so we'd have this like group of like full of B B would be full and then here comes these like old two people kicking us out and it was just like nope <laughs> not doing that anymore nope. so but yeah man but everybody it'll be. It's gonna, we're gonna go with a bang. Every it's gonna be great. I want to stay involved as much as I can. Uh, it'll be yeah. end, buddy. To the end, right? Yep. After it'll be, it'll be, it'll be good. Oh, good that's, vibes. That's good vibes. awesome, bro. Thanks. Well, I hope you guys enjoy the la- your, your uh, enjoy the final the next the minutes. Uh, <laughs> all <laughs> the um, in the name of our Lewis. Green dump. There you go. There you go. Wow. Amazing. We got Maybe he will be the last call. Two great calls. <laughs> the last show and the last call. Who else was Almost mentioned? Uh, Arlo Roberts. Uh, wow. Time to, to talk there. sports. No. Uh, the Beat Club. Uh, Jay's show. Just... Uh, the Kitchen Sink show. Uh, couch slugs, a mystery train, the guy who wants to show his Batman footage and forcing us off the air, but I'm just naming off a bunch of old programs that nobody remembers. Uh, I remember a few of them. I worked in some of them. <laughs> you worked all of them, probably. <laughs> probably. The names well, just what don't about, Whatever happened to Let's Get Into Trouble Baby, man? Oh, Let's Get Into Trouble Baby with, uh, yeah. what was his name? Uh, Fred Janis? No, I want to oh. call him Smitty, but that's not right. Sid. No, there was Sid's show. No, the oh, Sid show, yeah. Yeah. God. Now, there's a, there the was a cluster, dude. The guy who had one dude. foot. Speedy. 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 Yeah, Speedy. Oh, he didn't have one hey, foot. Hey, what's coming on tonight? <laughs> he thought he had and, one uh, foot. The John uh, Back... John I, Birch Society of Tucson. John Birch Society of Tucson. And let's not forget uh, Spanked in Mo Flava. <laughs> oh man! So, no more green room either, huh? Mm-hmm. Favorite, favorite, uh, crank callers. I want to say those NWO guys. They had a were pretty, good pretty awesome for a while there. Yeah. Uh, come in my mouth, guys. Yeah, that was good. They almost forced me into retirement five years ago, but then they all went away. They must have graduated or dropped out of the U. Yeah, and why? Because it was so gone. annoying, and yeah. you're just like, I oh, it was terrible. Know. They were every other caller on no. every show for months. So what exactly the city of Tucson going to do? They're going to put like chains on the doors and say it's closed. I guess. No, oh. I, I don't know if they're going to chain it, but they'll, I'm sure they'll keep it locked. Uh, go to. Oh, now that's when access was access. Uh, that's when what Arthur I, was down here. That's what I was gonna try and segue into was uh, what Mr. about what about all the friends we've lost to public access? Oh, and also the great producers. Turns out that that kid was like in his twenties. The cops had no ground to stand on, and everything was just dropped. Oh, oh yeah, that about, story. <laughs> about that, that old story. story before we. So go. yeah, I had to talk to Sam Barron. I wish, uh, I don't know how we got off track on that story. Ray called. Had to talk to Sam Barron. Well, you, okay. Was this about the Wiggler? 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, Dr. Sam Barron. Well, I want to hear. I want to hear. The police are. The police want that tape. Who knows, right? I'm like, I don't know where that tape is. Sam Barron. The only time he's ever talked to me. <laughs> when I, I'm downstairs on the computers, and 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 he comes over here, and now he has to talk to me. This is 1989, 90, 90 something, 99. Right? 89, because I know I shot the footage in July of 89. 89. The same year you got Ray well, suspended for six months. I got Ray <laughs> suspended? You're yeah, bad. because I put footage of you saying the F word like six times at the beginning of one of his episodes. He's been doing it ever and since. And I had to talk to Sam Barron. <laughs> oh, I didn't get Ray. You got Ray. You're the one that edited that footage. What the, what the reason? I, here's because, because you were sharing your time slot with another show and you weren't supposed to do that. Well, all right, here's the end of my story. We're so bad. Uh, the guy I know for a fact was of legal age because we were. On, I was on tour with him, and he was drinking at the bars. And like I say, it's in. It was in both newspapers. So that's. But the, your name wasn't mentioned. You, was it? Go down to the library and look at the microfish. <laughs> is your, uh, is it your name mentioned? Well, obviously, it did. Wow. Random I access. Was, you're notorious. Well. More than I thought you Not were. Not as notorious as some of the other people, like <laughs> Mr. Israel. Yeah. Or. And, and many other, like you were saying, Lou that video. Just aren't around Lou anymore. video yeah. was, was people, classic. We've done many shows with many people who are not here anymore, and uh, like you just one of, one of my favorite people who's on the screen right behind you, Arthur Michione, of one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. My second director. <laughs> Is that right? First being I, Eddie. Well, so so you have JJ is like, well, was he better than Arthur? How, Who how knows? can he be better than Arthur? Arthur was awesome. If you if I ever could get Arthur on one of my projects, I felt like I'd accomplish something. I wish I wish we Larry Beiser were here now. Yeah, he, I wonder he's, if he's, he's going to be at that around, party. But, uh, well, he's still alive. I yeah. know that and Cindy. Wow, as we uh, enter our final 10 minutes on the air. Do you, do you remember when we we're set the, the smoke cable, alarm? We're not really on the air. We're remember the when we set the smoke Travel. alarms off in, in Studio uh, A when they were using the fog machine and it was a, a, a mineral base, vegetable oil base? And it, oh, they probably and didn't it, like that. Uh, the fire do department I came down and shut party? it down. What, what now? Do I get to show another Call Me Crazy episode before the end? Well, they're going to accept programming until the end of June, so we could turn in probably at least one or two more fresh Call Me Crazies. All right, dude. Yeah, we'll have to get ready for hey, that. Guess what, Ray? Hey, can we come pick you up after the show? Uh, not really. Not today, guys. Well, we'll probably see him soon, though. He is yeah. really emerging, you see. <laughs> He's I, back on I, the I podcast. am crawling from the lake of fire. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> seen you in no, this, is, this is a real GMR almost a year, year. Eleven, eleven months. Yeah, Ray. Yeah, I know. It's Where's my? my uh, you still got my posters? <laughs> well, I sold them all. Yeah. You sold my sold posters. He had a yard How much sale. Did you get? He made eighteen uh, bucks, right? You told yeah, me, yeah, huh? I you, told him real cheap. Hey, like you owe me five bucks. You told man. me you were gonna give me the that my money. Ghostwriter poster. What? And I never, you know, and I never got to see you. I never, I never got to see you again. I think oh. from Comic Con, I believe. Yeah, it has been since Comic Con. Hmm? That's true. Where's my five bucks? At Comic Con. Comic Con. I gotta go to Phoenix to go get it. All yep. right, let's go. Oh man. Final ten minutes, you say, dude? Yeah, even less than now. Oh. So, uh, we, I, can't we, believe, I can't believe there's no reporter there uh, no, covering no. the story. Nobody gives a shit. <laughs> they what just about, don't care. What about Magic Mouse? Well, oh. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Let's, oh, I wish you had never brought that awful, awful Shane Eden. Awful. Yep, yep. Magic Mouse. <laughs> you can't mention Shane Eden and, and, and that awful thing in the same breath. It's the only reason. You introduced me to that guy. You're like, oh, we got to, you ought to move down. Me and you moved in next door to hey, that I dude. I was as bamboozled as everybody else by that prick. 
He was. What if uh, I'm the last day I chain myself to one of the uh, cameras there? Yeah, there you they go. They just can't close like the place. Like chaining yourself to a tree. To the camera. I don't know. They'll, they'll probably figure it out, Ray. Right? They'll some somebody up here, and yeah, at least they'll get on the news. People can pick locks these days, <laughs> <laughs> is, you know. It'll they be grappled to the, the roof and come in through the ceiling. Or we'll, we'll have a black casket and funeral procession. Wow, those eggs really look good. Look at look at those eggs, y'all. Yeah, but cooking. he's put, he's he's putting marijuana it's in those eggs. eggs. Ganja. Oh, well, that's eggs not ganja. a lot of good. Yeah, you ever try that? You can watch that on the television, YouTube. guys. It's the f- Fucking end of it really is the end of television. When I started the show in September of '02, we were told then that this place was going to be closing any time. <laughs> we were told that 25 years ago, but it looks like the name of the show has finally uh, come uh, to fruition. Yeah, we're going to get saved to fruition. Yeah. I have so many stories yeah. about this place that I can't talk about. I- it's, like what, what podcast. Now? it's not over if you listen to GMR podcast every week or oh, that's right. too close that's for right. podcast. Hey, Ray, are you listening to our too close for podcast podcast? To tell you the truth, having the last time I heard the podcast was at Comic Con. Oh, wow. You got some catching up. Wow. You got a long You way got to some go. explaining to do, Ray. I oh, You wouldn't half of believe what I would have to tell you. Oh. Yeah, but that's okay. More stories yeah, that can't be told. The, the end of television. It is. It's all about the end of television. The it's, end of access. All right, so next Wednesday, I'm coming over to your house, and I'm just going to knock on your door, sit in your porch until I can talk to you, right? <laughs> we lasted that's a lot good. longer than a lot of other access stations. Mm-hmm. It, it's just too bad I, when I hang up, it's over. And, you know, do you remember oh, so. that at one at one point we were voted the number one studio yeah. in the nation. 1991. If, in the country. In the country, yeah. Because we have the absolutely the finest facility here. And just... And the availability and the options were always there. Do, do we got a few minutes to talk about 1991? Because that was the year of the, of the Gulf War. And... That was the year at this place also started to get a lot of rules stuck on we it did, because of what you're about to Yeah, talk we about. did a thing where we went live for like Days. every every <laughs> day, every night. We went live until everybody just wanted to go home about the Gulf War. Like it was called Protest for Peace. Yeah. That was the yeah. that was the title that they had put on it. They were showing the CNN. Uh, it was basically I'm, I'm a, a filibuster. Off subject, Marty, but didn't I get a letter saying I was too inebriated the, the week before for the show? I don't know about that. Where was I? Well, guys, I I'm gonna have to let you guys go and and, and make it too freaking bad that it's over. Yeah, well, at least it was here in the first place, so. Yeah, I, well, the great thing that could happen that it happened, but That's the saddest right. thing that could happen happened. That's right. So, well, I'm glad you made it on the, the, on the phone, man. Something else. So. Uh, well, I, mean, I will see you guys soon. I'll see you guys next week for sure. Cool. You know? Okay, and, cool. And uh, I said, uh, well, I would, I would have to say, you guys hang up on me. I just can't hang up. <laughs> All right. All right. Good night, All right, guys. last call. So that was a good last call. Why don't you refresh people well, exactly where I was they in my were story? They were showing CNN footage off the satellite that apparently wasn't supposed to be broadcast or something, and apparently somebody complained. Oh, that oh, between that and Looper so, Video's oh, Great Satan Show, we all were, these regulations got stuck we on. We were doing all this live. Is so. see, I never even heard that because here's what I remember: we were all just working as like a little slick unit, and everybody was doing everything or anything. You know what I mean? It was it was just anarchy basically up here. You're you're running a camera. Yeah, but this all, place can run now, like a, we, had, I, we had the crew that runs like a well oiled machine. The volunteers. Well, here. back in 1991, this place was at its peak. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. People were, uh, oh, oh, you need me to step in and, and grip a little bit. You need me to to help out with the lighting. You need me to. We don't have a crew. Going you need me to step the on camera and talk for a little while. We're going up in five minutes. We don't have a cameraman. Can you come up and run the show? So everything is. I remember just uh, people were just like, you know, it's like 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 an ant colony. People were just shifting between <laughs> positions, and doing doing Whatever everything. Whatever needed to be done. And uh, I was my my thing was I I had a little experience in master control, so I'm of master control, and we were getting these live feeds that they would show on the news, 
like the following day and it said you know we were getting like the four cornered experience you know yeah, what, what do you call that you could see all that information when you, when you can see yeah you're seeing the four corners the center of the picture is the uh, the edges of well, there's anyway, a proper word. So, we're out of time. And, no, no. Let me finish this because I got this. <laughs> you got two minutes in my last show, and you're not finished your story. No. All right. Sir. So, in the very corner, it said, "Do not broadcast." <laughs> and we were broadcasting it live because uh, these were these were live feeds out of Riyadh and and Saudi Arabia. And that started the downfall. Okay. Oh, go ahead and I'm explain concerned. that, dude. I'm not, well. They got in trouble for that. The next thing you know, Great City and Large is getting in trouble for doing his show at 6 o'clock, even though we signed the thing. Then we have shows that are on after midnight. I'm getting suspended. And then I but farted on camera. It's all about me. I am the king of public access. I You're have the been Rick for a Flair long time. of public access. And now we're signing off. This kills the end of television. We'll this be back next week in some form or another in a podcast form that you can listen to on your phone if you like Too Close for Comfort. And if you don't, well... You can watch that Saturdays at 6 o'clock instead of this, because we're up against it, I believe. And you can see your... (laughs) 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 Ray remembers Too Close for Comfort. (laughs) How about this one? (laughs) We remember Too Close for Comfort. (laughs) The other hand. You know, when I first discovered this place, Too Close for Comfort had just barely gone off the air. So it all goes into one giant loop. But it has been an interesting experience. What my, what would any of our lives have been like had we not come down here and Last time do I'm a show buttons, and had not... I mean, we'd all be in a complete different trajectory. And so all we can say is it's a good thing it happened because look where we are now. We're in an awesome place right now, right? Yeah. So we'll uh, see you next week on update (laughs) and all those other shows that are coming on next week that are awesome so uh tune in go tell the city council what you think start your own access station start a kickstarter fund get us going well thanks for uh 25 years peace out and uh we'll tell david letterman what's up bye